Welcome back to the channel. We have yet another video today. I hope you like the camera angle because uh, I couldn't figure out any other camera angle which would allow me to get this thing in shot. Today we have a Philips MA60 gear in head, uh, Mark 1 version. Mark 1 version, it's got this aluminium shoe, that's where the gear is located. And it's very heavy. Because all the weight is at this end, carrying it, you have to sort of hold it here and use this whole length of the lantern here to counteract the uh, weight. So this one is fitted with a NEMA socket up here. The Philips branding is at this end. You've got the Philips logo as well as the Philips branding. This end, you've got the NEMA socket, which sits on this sort of perch here in between the four sort of bolts that hold the shoe on. I think earlier versions of this lantern had the bolts that would attach the shoe to the fiberglass canopy. They were situated on top. This one has a 0392 date code on the photocell, which dates to March 1992. Being so long, the bowl needs one, two, three, four, five, six clips to hold the bowl on. So to open this lantern, Two of these clips act as hinges, and I do believe, yep, yeah, it's that one, and that one. That one there just acts as a clip, and these three on this side also act as clips. So now we can open this up. The bowl sits quite nicely there, and this is how you would access the lamp area for lamp changes. Inside, this is a 131 watt SOX economy lamp, so SOX-E. The equivalent of this in the SOX form would have been the 180 watt SOX lamp. It's got one sort of uh, lamp support at this end of the lantern. This lamp actually has some hours on it and um, it is slightly defective. One of the electrodes has fell off. So the electrode is actually at this end of the lamp. The only sort of difference is that it's a little bit more flickery on startup, but it soon sort of straightens itself out. And you can also see the difference in the height of the bright spots when it's turned on. I'll put a picture up on screen now of that phenomenon. Check that out. There you go. Not much is going on in this section of the lantern. It really just is for the lamp. So I'm just about to move the lantern for to show you the inside of this. And um, you can take the bowl off these quite easily. Inside, I don't know if that uh, HW853 is in the way. You can see these little toggles. Nah, you're good. Inside, you can see these little toggles. You just little toggles like that, which releases the bowl. And the bowl comes off entirely, which makes this a little bit easier. So you can see the sticker right there. The date code on this is 2E27, which likely refers to the 27th of May, 1992. So we actually have an exact date of manufacturer for this one. There is also a stamp on it, which says the 8th of May, 1992. So we can see what date it was actually inspected before it was given its sticker and produced and released into the world to do its service. This one had been in service for about 30 years before it was removed. But the NEMA socket is also on the other side of this. I'm going to move it this way now. This is actually a perfect demonstration of how off balance the lantern is. Look, even with all of that end of the lantern off the shelf, it can still stay up here because this bit is really heavy. Check this out. I got myself a new screwdriver so I don't have to use that bloody yellow one ever again until I lose this one, of course. So to open this, it's just two screws on either side here of the shoe. So after you've undone those two screws, you can hinge the shoe open. And now we can see just why it is so heavy. So it can come off entirely. And then you've got a sort of clip connector here. Unclip it entirely and your shoe is separated. Presumably, this was so that if your leak transformer failed or any part of your gear failed, you could take the shoe off and put a new one on seamlessly. So as you can see, one of the grub screws is inside the lantern while one of them is outside. So you would need to open this up to take the lantern off. This lantern didn't need the grub screws to be taken off because it was sawn off because um, that grub screw there, the one on the outside, is completely seized. I think this one does turn. Yep, this one does turn. Um, I don't think this one does though. 
I can't recall if I've tried persuading that grub screw out, so I, it might move, but I might have just not bothered. As well in this section, you can see the four bolts that you would use to take the shoe off. Um, all of those do move because I have taken the shoe off before when I cleaned the lantern up and got all the cobwebs and bits of dirt and other various things out of it. Very simple layout inside. You've got your mains, which comes into this connector here. Uh, and then you've got your live, which goes to your photo cell. Live comes out of the photo cell, comes up here, which will connect to the gear. So um, you've got your leap transformer there and your capacitor there. Now this leap transformer isn't really held in by screws. It's just got this metal band going over it, which keeps it held in. The capacitor has got a simple toggle mechanism to pull it out. There is 87 and then 44 on the capacitor, which I think refers to the 44th week of 1987. Um, don't know what that is off the top of my head, but I will put it on screen now. It's a Philips L5020 forward slash 07 capacitor, 30 microfarad. So the leak transformer simply comes out with some persuasion. Oh. The screwdriver doesn't fit. Luckily, I have this old thing, which should fit. It does just about. So this metal band simply comes off like so. Looks like there would have been an inspection sticker on there as well, but that is long gone. These things do get pretty warm, so the chances are that inspection sticker is just been burnt to a crisp. Get off. How did it just clip itself back in? So now you can just lift the leak transformer out. So there is another sticker in there. It says R8021 gear unit for 135 to 180 watt socks lamp. Suitable for use with MA50 slash 60 GO. Now GO means gear in head. If you have an MA50 or an MA60 and it says dash OO after MA60 on the sticker, that means remote geared. So the leak transformer sticker is surprisingly still mostly intact. You can read it. It's got the wiring instructions there. So this um, leak transformer is a Philips L4135. And then on the bottom, it says note capacitor essential. So originally this MA60 would have had a 180 watt lamp in it. It was refitted to 131 watt socks economy during a relamp scheme. I think the lamp actually has a date on it. It does indeed. It has 10.20, which likely refers to October of 2020. It's like that claw game. You know in arcades where you get that scammy claw game and you can never win anything from it because the claw literally basically just does this. So it's just a money grab. It's a bit like doing that actually, trying to get these out here with the, but obviously a lot easier. So yeah, very simple setup on the inside. Now I've got to put it back together. I think I need a cup of tea. Right, that is the lantern shoe or the gear installed in it. Found that the best way to put one of these back on is drop it in at a 90 degree angle, shuffle it backwards, and then it is on the hinge. You can connect this back up, make sure it's the right way around, of course. The MA60 can close. So now we are going to put the lamp back in. So put it in the lamp support first, shuffle it through, and then into the lamp holder it goes. This could be quite annoying actually, because it's on the far side. I might actually come around here to do this. Ah, there's a floodlight in the way. Um, I guess we're just doing it this way then. So you've just got to make sure that the toggles are loose. Shimmy it back on. And then we pull the toggles. Much like that. Bring the bowl this way. You can clip the two hinges down. Make sure that the bowl is fully situated on the gasket seal and isn't overlapping the canopy. Because if that happens, um, putting too much pressure on the edge of the bowl can break it. It will also compromise the seal and may let water in. I know that the MA was sort of notorious for having water intake. Oh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck. Thank you. 
we go. The bowl, just because of how long this bowl is, um, it sort of shrunk a little bit in the middle. So I had to use a screwdriver there to lift the outer edge of the bowl out and put it back on the seal because both sides are practically not on it. This side's doing it as well. It seems these bowls have a, a tendency to shrink a little bit. That is the lantern entirely together. I am going to install a dummy link cell on this and then it's time for a warm up, like so. Oh, that's actually surprisingly stable, like that. Now, you can see what I mean about the sudden stuttery startup because one of the electrodes is missing.
That looks like it's reaching full warm up now. Provides a very nice light to the lantern room actually. So that was my Philips MA60 gear in heads. Uh, let's give it a switch off actually. So you can hear that it was quite noisy with the slightly damaged lamp, but other than that, works very well. I hope you all enjoyed.